In this video, we're going to discuss the most important things to do on Diablo 4's launch day. <laughs> Now we know that season one will not start until at least six weeks after the game releases because of in-game achievements we saw during the open beta, which reward you for playing during the six week preseason. And we know that the statues of Lilith won't reset each season. Knowing those two pieces of information, if you want to be as prepared as possible for the first season, it is in your best interest to hunt down all altars of Lilith before the first season starts so that you have as many extra stats as possible on your first seasonal character. As a reminder, Altars of Lilith will give you plus two to a different stat, whether it's strength, intelligence, dexterity, or willpower, or you can also increase your maximum number of obols, which is the gambling currency. So get yourself as prepared for season one as possible by getting all those altars once the game launches. You can already go online to see where each one is located in Fractured Peaks if you want to map out a route. And while you're looking at that interactive map, take a look at the aspects you can get from dungeons and Fractured Peaks. These are extremely important because legendaries aren't going to be dropping like they were in the beta. And these aspects are guaranteed from these dungeons, which means it will be your best bet to make a build around what is available. And remember, once you get these legendary aspects, they go into your codex of power and can be imprinted on rare items an infinite number of times, meaning it will be with you as you level your character all the way to max level and beyond. So finding a legendary item and extracting that aspect is a one-time deal versus Codex of Power being infinite. This is why you usually are going to want to save those high rolled aspects you get from legendaries for imprinting on endgame gear while you use Codex of Power while you're leveling. Remember too that legendary aspects you earn from clearing dungeons will always roll the lowest possible value, so these of course are meant to be replaced in the endgame by higher rolled versions. And don't just leave your planning to Fractured Peaks, you should also take a look at what you can find in other zones and see what's worth seeking out in order to complete your leveling build. You can see what's available using build calculators, which I'll link in the description. I also put together my own document, which lists which aspects can get added to the Codex of Power that fit a shape-shifting druid build for each zone, so I know exactly what I'm looking for in each zone. That way I can keep upgrading my gear over and over while keeping those legendary aspects the entire time while I level. When you take a look at what's available, you might actually be surprised by what aspects can get found through dungeons, and because of that, you might actually consider changing the build you were planning on going because of how strong legendary aspects are. For example, there really aren't any good legendary aspects you can find in dungeons for a werebear. So it seems to me that is not going to be a good build to level a druid with. So I recommend check out what aspects are available for your class and map out which ones to get for each zone. And if you don't want to do that yourself, I'll be making leveling guides to show which build make the most sense to level with for each of the five classes. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see those along with more awesome Diablo 4 videos. And don't forget that depending on the item slot, you get increased legendary aspect effectiveness. Amulets provide 50% more and two-handed weapons provide double the value of other item slots. So when you get a really strong legendary aspect for the build you're going, make sure to imprint it onto items that go into one of those two slots. And last thing regarding dungeons, you can click the entrance of a dungeon to be teleported back outside to the entrance of the dungeon. You can also select this action on your emote wheel to teleport out even faster. This is helpful if you don't want to go back to town, but instead either run the dungeon again or go back to the wilderness near where the dungeon is located. This is much faster than running all the way back or going back to town when you are on your way to somewhere else. You don't want to go back to town. Now, while we're on the topic of gear, I would recommend to avoid just equipping any item that shows a green number. Just because a piece of gear gives you more armor doesn't mean necessarily that it's an upgrade. If you're accustomed to Diablo Diablo 3 telling you your damage, toughness, and recovery, whether that's an increase or decrease. This can trick you because by default, Diablo 4 only shows how much armor you're gaining on gear or how much damage increase a weapon is dealing. But the affixes on items can be much more powerful than just armor or damage. So make sure you're getting your primary stat, increased damage based on being closer distant, and plus skill ranks depending on your build. And in order to do that, go to the options menu and enable advanced tooltip compare. 
compare and advanced tooltip information so that you can more easily compare items and see the whole picture. With this enabled, you get a summary of properties you are gaining and losing if you switch items, which is very helpful in determining if an item is an upgrade. All right, moving on. Remember to get your mount at level 36 through the quest Donin's Favor in Act 2. Mounts will help you traverse the vast open world of Sanctuary. In Diablo 4, it is the largest playable area out of any Diablo game. And not only that, but each class has a unique dismount ability, which dismounts the player and performs a special powerful attack. Now, if you get hit by an enemy, you're going to be immediately dismounted, and then you won't be able to perform this dismount attack. So make sure not to get too close to enemies when you see them, so that you can always pull off this attack when dismounting. Now, when it comes to which activities provide the most XP in order to get to level 36 as fast as possible, make sure you're clearing strongholds, dungeons, quests, and world events, because they all grant bonus XP upon completion. And it's important to not forget to view your region progress and claim your bonus XP, gold, potion charges, and skill points. You can advance your region progress by discovering areas, completing side quests, and other activities listed below. And while we're on the topic of leveling, here are some tips to level just a little bit faster. Number one, always use an elixir. You get 5% bonus XP, and some of these elixirs are really strong. Whether they bonus your critical strike damage, they increase your damage against demons, maybe they even give you some resistance to help you survive. They're all super valuable, so make sure to craft them at the alchemist and always keep one on your character. Also, don't forget to start on world tier two. Higher world tiers grant as much as 20% more experience from killing monsters, and you also get 15% more gold at the cost of enemies being more challenging. Now guys, it's absolutely worth it to go straight to world tier two. The difference in difficulty is really like choosing easy versus normal, and I would wager anyone can handle world tier two from the start. And if for some reason you want to change your world tier difficulty, you can do that at any time at Kilvashad's world tier statue, which is just northeast from the waypoint. Now, another way to level faster is with friends. You get an added bonus XP per person in your party. With one party member, it's 5%, two is 8%, and three is 11% bonus XP. Max party size is four players, so that is your maximum bonus. And not only do you get that XP bonus, but of course, with more players means monsters die faster, so it's absolutely worth it to group with players if you can. Now, if we add all of the methods I've just mentioned together, that's a combined 36% increased XP gain from all sources. So if you want to maximize your experience gains, this is the way. And what will also speed up your leveling is knowing where you're going. Now, it might seem obvious, but Diablo 4 will not be launching with an overlay map. And you're gonna have to either use the mini map or the full screen map or a combination of both. And by clicking a location on the full screen map, you can actually drop a pin that will show a red path on your mini map from where you are to where you just drop that pin. And then you can just follow the red path on your mini map, which will guide you to that location in the fastest possible route. And if you enjoyed these Diablo 4 launch day tips, you should give this video on your screen a click, which goes over the top 10 tricks you need to know before you play Diablo 4. I'll see you there in just a minute.